K-dramas are renowned for making us swoon in the most bizarre ways. It's almost as if it's expected for a K-drama to give us butterflies in the most inventive, odd, or even cliché occasions and tactics. If You Wish Upon Me is no stranger to a plethora of lovey-dovey, all Kong doll Kong moments sprinkled throughout for the audience enjoyment. Let us take a closer look at all of the noteworthy, heartwarming enchantments of the heart that occur from episodes 1 to 8. If You Wish Upon Me's plot was inspired by a genuine tale about the Make-A-Wish Foundation in the Netherlands. The plot centers around a young single man, Jior, played by the Ji Chang Wook, who enters a hospice facility on the order of community service after having a turbulent background. He joins Team Genie, an organization that grants the final request of people with terminal conditions and for the very first time learns to care for others with Su Young of SNMD, who plays his love interest, Sho Yun Chu. Through numerous episodes, he and Team Genie listen to and carry out the final wishes of people nearing the end of their life. The narrative appears to be a formula that is bound to make a handful of tears fall down your cheek. But don't allow the bittersweet premise dominate the sweetness of the drama. Unfortunately, there were no romantic scenes in the pilot episode because the drama school was to introduce us to the major characters and how they initially met. Here, we meet Jiori, an ex-convict who is released from jail but causes trouble again when he and the ambulance carrying Sho Yun Chu collide. Not fatally, but enough to inflict harm. The ambulance was being driven by Su Dong Il's character, Kang Tae Sik, but he fractures his leg and is unable to continue. Tae Sik and Yun Chu are actually in the ambulance with the patient in a bid to fulfill his dying dream to see Korea's East Sea. With the patient's time running out, Jory is ordered to drive the ambulance to its destination. That was basically how their first encounter went. Nothing too exciting in terms of Yoon Ju and Jory's courtship. This would not be their only encounter in this episode. The two would meet again, but this time the interaction was more heated than anything else. Due to the accident he caused, Jiori was forced to perform community service at the hospice, and when he came, Yunju greeted him by kicking his side mirror. The seeds have already been established. Now we'll watch how their relationship develops in the next episodes. The sequence in the second episode where Yunju kicks Jiori's side mirror starts as off. The reason she was so upset at him was not because of the first mishap. But because when Jory arrived at the hospice, he almost ran her over, causing her to trip and filthy her clothing. She continues to feel skeptical about him and Yunju spotted Jory scrubbing the ambulance the next day. She attempted to talk to him but they simply ended up arguing. These initial interactions are unlikely to arouse love feelings, but they will heighten the impact of their relationship which may develop later on. The two also talked about the repair cost of the side mirror. When Jory informed Yunju the price was $18,000, she couldn't help but laugh. Later in the episode, though, a touch of romance begins to bloom. Yunju requested Jory's assistance while attempting to move the patient to his bed. Jory initially rejected, but perhaps it was Yunju's beautiful smile that ultimately convinced him to assist her. Or perhaps it was something else. Talk about a powerful smile. Jory declined to dine with them again at supper. But before she went to bed, Yunju handed him a snack after their brief talk. It seems she is softening up to him after seeing his more vulnerable side. We may say Yunju and Jory's working relationship is better than previously in the third episode. Yet their squabbling remains, as Jory protested when Yunju requested him to assist her in placing the spoons. But this could be a sign that the two are starting to be comfortable with each other. Their bickering is even starting to cause the other characters to laugh at them. Sadly, their patient died later that night. Jor was stunned but Yunju was nearby and she consoled him by saying, He probably knows how you feel. The two are starting to share their emotions. And that is always a way for two people's relationship to deepen. Yunju simply fooling around began speaking in a very adorable voice or ague, stated, I'm unhappy because Sihi was in so much agony. I was extremely upset. Jory happened to be there as well, and he was flabbergasted after hearing Yunju's cute side baby speak. 
After being at each other's neck for the first few episodes, seeing Yunju's cute side and seeing Jora's shock was a breath of fresh air as the two start seeing each other in a different light. The fourth episode finally contains the first real romantic scenes we've been waiting for. Sehi, the patient, requires an ensemble of seven persons to perform, and Yunju and Jore were among those chosen. Meanwhile, Jore ended up assisting Soonja in the kitchen. When Yunju arrived, she requested to sample what they were making. Jore naturally fed Yunju with his hands, and she didn't notice it until it was too late. Yunju felt flustered, so she left right away after complaining about how boring the food was. I mean, who wouldn't be flustered if Ji Chang-wook himself fed you? Later as part of a play, the exchange I love yous and while it was just a script and them acting, we just now can't stop but imagine them as a couple. Even though they are still awkward with each other, the same goes for Yoonju and Jore, who seem to be getting closer as time passes by. In the fifth episode, we witness their first kiss. We also watch Yoonju and Jora's clumsy yet sweet first kiss during their performance. Talk about a random first kiss. Though it may be just for a play, a kiss is still a kiss. And I'm sure all those watching this were jealous, hoping they were Jore or Yoonju in that situation. Jora stated that he is aware that the kiss was not planned but that he was pushed. But you don't appear weak enough to be pushed easily, Yoonju jokingly remarked. We all love seeing a more flirty and playful Yenju. The two have now certainly fallen for each other. All it took was a kiss. The sixth episode finally gave us a confession. While chatting, Jory began to inquire about the things that make Yunju happy. He asked Yunju to tell him three things, to which she replied working out, working as a nurse, and eating good cuisine and speaking with people in the lounge. Jory only asked for three. But Yunju unexpectedly responded that she discovered a new delight in her life, which is the man who wants to know about my joy in life. So I'm wondering what may make him laugh more because his grin is so gorgeous. Yunju concluded. Jora was taken aback by Yunju's candor, especially when he required if she was confessing. Yunju said yes without hesitation. The honesty is sure to have caught us off guard, and if we were swooned by such a sweet and honest confession, imagine how Jiora must feel in that moment. In the seventh episode, Yunju ran upon Jora in the mountains and enthusiastically greeted him. But Jora was enraged because he assumed she has been attacked by the boar. Yunju laughed it off and even mocked Jora by asking whether he sobbed because he believed she had been attacked. Jory had a cold after being soaked in the rain earlier. Yunju was there to look after him, but she also used the occasion to torment him. Jory discussed his current fears with Yunju and urged him to show him that death isn't the end. Yunju took this seriously and displayed her tattoo to him. Jory then abruptly confessed to Yunju, stating, Show Yunju, I like you, and then fell asleep. We finally see Jore reciprocate Yunju's feelings, and the slow burn of their love makes even these simple words and phrases cause our heart to race. In the exact middle of the story, the eighth episode, we experience the most romantic episode of the series until that point. This episode was just a treasure trove of swoon worthy moments. Yunju and Jore were the only ones left to clean up after Mr. Khan's party. During their talk, Jory expressed remorse for what he did to Sonny's prior owners. Yunju said that he shouldn't be ashamed because he doesn't need to gain her favor. Hearing this, Jory eventually said that he feels compelled to since he likes her. Jory then had the confidence to ask Yunju out on a date. Yunju didn't want to respond right away, but as Jory stood up believing he had been rejected, Yunju responded okay if she could choose where they would go. The two ultimately went on a date, but it was not the one Jore had hoped for. They began by taking CBR classes, volunteering at an animal shelter, rock climbing, and mountain riding. The two then decided to end the night with coffee, but it was already shutting when they arrived. Jore mustered the bravery to kiss Yunju as they walked out. Yunju then inquired whether he had been pushed and kissed him again, stating that's how it should be done. Jory questioned Yunju after kissing her if she had been pushed, and she said that he had pulled him. We just can't handle all the romance. 
our hearts were about to burst out of our chests unquestionably. We can't wait to see where their relationship will go from that date because we're just halfway through the series. But we can rest comfortable knowing that the romance will not cease and we still have a plethora of beautiful moments waiting to bless our lovesick eyes. Let us just hope our hearts are strong enough to handle the two heart-eyed lovers. If you enjoyed this video and maybe even felt some affection for the characters, subscribe to us now and let us all stay tuned for more lovable moments just like these ones. You surely wouldn't want to miss out on anything. And so, see you on our future videos. 사랑해.